Hi everyone and welcome to our last housing live event for the housing application. I can't believe it's here. That's right. This housing live is all about step three of the first year housing application, which is all about room selection. The most important step. The most exciting part. Exciting. I think. That's a better word. Yeah, better it's word. it's very exciting. Um, and so thank you so much for tuning in during this video. What we're going to do is share all of the information that you need to know about the room selection process. We're also going to be answering some of your frequently asked questions um, at the very end. So make sure that you stay until the very end so that you hear those questions in case you know you need a little bit of a refresher. But we are going to go in through all of this information really, really in depth. If you're an upper class student, stop right now. This video is not for you. And so I would just go ahead and exit right now and go on our, our website and look for the upper class room selection video since the process is a little bit different for you all. So make sure to check that one out. So during this video, we're going to talk about again, all of the things that you need to know about room selection. And the first thing that we're going to talk about, which you are all experts on by this point is time tickets. We, we use them for everything. Literally everything. So if by now you don't know Chris's jo like um, example about the Onway ramp, then have you even been here? We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Watch the old videos. Yeah, because you'll get it. Every it. time. Every single time. And so if you want to know when your time ticket opens, it's very important that you do a few things. One is to visit our website because we have so much information on there. And the second is actually probably most more important than the first, which is to check your email. Your KSU student email. Thank you for clarification. Yeah. Your KSU student email, very important. You can also check the housing portal. So if you haven't been you know, going on the housing portal, which you already should have, you can also see it there. Um, it should be the first thing that really pops up as long as you've completed the right steps to get to step three. So if you haven't paid your, your um, application initiation fee or you haven't signed your license agreement up, up until this point, then you either haven't completed roommate selection um, or decided not to do it. Um, and so you won't be able to see this next step. So very important that you go there and look for it. We're gonna have a little video so you can see exactly where to find it, but it's very easy. Follow along those steps. Um, and again, the reason that we do time tickets and why we talk about it so much is to make sure that you have a really good experience when you're inside the housing portal, that you're able to go through the process really smoothly and really to make sure that our systems don't crash because we know all of you are just anxious and biting your nails to get a room. <laughs> and we want you to have a great experience. That's why we use time tickets. That's right. So we'll go ahead and move on now into kind of the overview of the room selection process and what that looks like, um, you know, what it looks like for different kinds of students, right? We've mm -hmm. got students who are doing this all by themselves and we've got students who are going to be doing this in a roommate pair. And so it might look a little bit different for those students. So we want to make sure that we talk about all of those things. Yeah, absolutely. So like Catherine said, we're on the final step of the housing application process. You started your application, you signed your license agreement, you picked your preferred roommate. Now it's time for the, the most exciting part, picking your room. So we're gonna focus on those students who are in roommate pairs, uh, the solo people. Just ignore what I'm about to say. If you don't have a roommate, that's totally fine. It's an optional step, or, or it was, because it's closed now. Uh, but with roommate pair management, uh, you and your roommate, your preferred roommate, need to discuss who is going to be the pair leader because that person is gonna drive everything for you and your, your roommate. Um, and when you get into room selection, there's a page called Roommate Pair Management, and it will show you who you are, it will show you who your roommate is, it will actually show you the time tickets for both students, and as a group, you need to elect whoever has the earlier time ticket to be the pair leader. And that's important for a couple reasons, because if they have an earlier time ticket, they're gonna be able to go into the room selection process earlier, and they will do everything. They're gonna actually place you, both students, on a room. The only thing the roommate pair leader is not gonna do is pay the room booking fee for both students. Each student is independently responsible for that $75 room booking fee. Uh, so please make sure you do that before room, room selection opens up. When we release time tickets, you'll be able to get to that page, the roommate pair management page, and go ahead and elect who the pair leader is. Uh, it's really simple to change who the pair leader is. We have a screen capture here showing really, truly how easy this process is. You look at the time tickets and there's a little button that says make leader and, and that's it. Then that person will then drive the rest of the process for you.
Now, there is an option to leave your roommate pair, but we want to caution you that this is undoable. You can, if you decide to leave your roommate pair, you can't undo that. Our housing office can't fix it for you. You can't go back in and add that person as a room because that is closed now. There's no going back. No going back. No takes backsies. <laughs> and there's a couple reasons why you might decide to leave your roommate pair. Um, maybe your roommate, your preferred roommate, isn't coming to Kennesaw State anymore. And you can choose to, to leave that group and go solo on your own. Um, we might not have enough beds, or excuse me, we might not have enough units that have more than one bed in them. And so that would force your roommate pair to split up and then go solo and find rooms on your own. Um, or if you just straight up don't want to live with that person anymore. You've talked, you've communicated, and you feel like, eh, maybe Catherine and I are a super great match. Yeah. I'm just going to secretly leave this pair and then go on my own. And we do have a screen capture here as well showing you how to leave your roommate pair if that's what you want to do. There's a big bold warning that says warning, you cannot undo this. So click <laughs> leave pair With only <laughs> at uh, the, the last event, like the last course of action. So then, uh, again, the solo people, your process is a lot easier. You don't have to worry about roommate pairs. You get to pick your own room for yourself, and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, it, the process is more simple for you. Very easy. <laughs> yeah. So once you uh, get your room selection time ticket and it opened up, we're going to give you an overview of the room selection process and how this works. So before uh, the room selection process starts, we have some, some tips for you. Yes. We have... I think 11 or 12 different floor plans for first year students to live in. Yeah, and every community has different floor plans inside of that community. So not all units in the University Village will be the same. Not of the units in Hornet Village will be the same. So there's lots of options on campus. Yeah, almost too many. <laughs> it, it's like a buffet of room options. In University Village, for example, there's five different floor plans that you can choose from. And uh, it, it can be overwhelming. Yeah. So we definitely recommend that all students make like a top three or a top five list, because depending on when your time ticket opens, you may not see anything available in, in your number one floor plan. So if you go in there and you say, I want a two by two in University Village and that's it, you're probably going to be disappointed. Yeah, because some, some units have more availability than others. Yes, absolutely. And we do not have that many two by twos in University Village. But in general, uh, when, you, when room selection opens up, uh, Kennesaw campus students will see Kennesaw campus rooms and depending on their gender they will see rooms coded for their specific gender. Marietta is the exact same. If you're participating in a living learning village you will only be able to see rooms that are allocated for your specific li living learning village. Uh, but we make the process as pretty straightforward as we can. We have a step-by-step -step guide on our website. Yes. Definitely recommend watching this video. There will be bookmarks where you can come back to this specific point but check the step-by-step -step guide. But really, we've built the portal in such a way that when you start the room selection process, you pretty much walk through it yourself. Yeah, and we've got virtual tours on our website as well of really basically every floor plan that we have on this on both of our campuses. And so that'll give you a good view of, okay, does this space have what I'm looking for? Other conversations that you're gonna wanna have, especially if you're in a roommate pair, is is the cost of this room okay? Not every room on campus costs the same. We get that question sometimes, all that, how much does it cost to live on campus? And it's like, well, it depends. It depends where you're going to be living, right? So if you're in a, a one by one unit in University Village Suites, that's gonna be much more pricey than if you're sharing a room, you know, in one of our like bunk bed options or mm -hmm. in one of our, our shared options. And so it really just depends. And so very important that if you are in a roommate pair, you are talking about cost as well and how much it's going to be per semester, per person, because those are the prices that are listed on our website. Um, so keep that, keep that in mind as well when you're having those conversations. Those are great pieces of advice. The pricing point is very a very crucial conversation yeah. because if your pair leader wants a, a more expensive room and you're like, hey, I can't afford that, we need to look at something else, those are all conversations to take place before room selection That's starts. Right. So 
your time ticket is open. It's time to go pick a room for either just yourself or you and your preferred roommate. The process is very, very simple. Um, and we're gonna have some screen recordings here as well. The first page is you make your initial community selection. And what we mean by that is, if you're in Kennesaw, do you wanna live in University Village, University Village Suites, or The Summit? In Marietta, it's do you wanna live in Howell Hall or Hornet Village? and you click a big icon with the picture of the building and it'll take you in there and it will show you every room that we have available. There's a menu on the left hand side where you could filter by room type. Like Catherine was saying, in Hornet Village we have a single, we have a double. And you could say, okay, I wanna live in Hornet Village, now I wanna filter by room type. I wanna look at the single rooms that are available. Mm -hmm. And the process is very much like shopping. Um, if, if you're solo, you're gonna put one bed into your shopping cart if you're in a roommate pair, you're gonna put two beds in your shopping cart. And the system is intuitive. So let's say Catherine and I are a roommate pair. It's gonna force me to pick beds that are in the same unit. Mm -hmm. It will not let us, let us place each other in different units. It's gonna say, hold on, you're linked up with somebody. You need to, to pick a room within the same unit. And the beds are labeled A, B, C, D, depending on how many beds are in the unit. So you know that if you're looking at a specific unit and you're putting yourself in room A and you're the room roommate group leader and your roommate you can't put them in you know bed A as well because that bed right. doesn't exist yeah. so if you're putting them in a bed A that means that they're not in the right unit and so it's important to look at those little details because I think sometimes students try to rush this process because they're mm -hmm. just like I need to get a room I need a room now and it causes them to have mistakes um, mm -hmm. when they're not being careful so look carefully at the unit number and the bed letter. Yes, and, and just for context, um, we are letting about 15 students in every 20 minutes. And so just say to yourself, I've got 20 minutes to pick a bed for myself or myself and my roommate before the next wave of students, like Catherine was saying that on ramp on the highway, before we allow the next 15 students to come in. So please take your time with this. Uh, and once you do put these items in your shopping cart, you then click proceed to the next step, and then from there it's gonna say, okay, great, you have two beds, you have two people in your roommate pair, who do you want to live where? And if I want bedroom A and Catherine wants B, I literally just hit a drop down and say, put me in A and Catherine in B, you proceed to the next step. Um, I, I said don't rush this process, but there is a timer. <laughs> once, you, <laughs> once you put beds in your shopping cart, you've got 10 minutes to go through the rest of the process, which is only a couple clicks of a button. Mm -hmm. You don't have 10 minutes to pay your room booking fee. We give you time for that afterwards. But just know, you'll see the, the clock start once your shopping cart has something in it. That's right. uh, and then pair leaders, again, you will do everything for you and your roommate pair. You will assign the beds for everybody. And then once the assignments are confirmed, you're done. That's we'll, it. we'll send you an email saying, congratulations, you've got a room. Here's what it is. Here are your roommates and you're good to go. We have added something new this year. It's special. It's special. <laughs> uh, we have given students the ability to change their room assignments. Now, just something to clarify, you can only change your room assignment before you pay the $75 room booking fee. That's right. Once you pay that fee, you're confirmed that room is yours. Can't really change it after that fact. Uh, but before you pay that fee, let's say Catherine and I, we get the room that we thought we wanted 
but we realize there's more options available, we can always go back in and change the rooms for both of us or for one of us, uh, you know, if I'm going solo. Uh, the process is really very simple. Uh, we have a screen video here showing you how that process works. talked about this a little bit but every student in order to completely finish their step three process of room selection need to pay a $75 room booking fee and that needs to be done 48 hours from when the student booked the room and so if you do find yourself in a situation like Chris is talking about where you do want to go back and change it you need to do it before those 48 hours mm -hmm. because if not you're basically just going to be if it, you wait too long the room is going to go back inside the main pool and you'll have to start all over again. And so very important that you keep that in mind. Ro roommate pair leaders um, need to make sure that they're communicating that to their, their roommates as well, letting them know, hey, I've already made the selection. We've got 48 hours to pay that room booking fee. It's gonna be $75 and that will make sure that we confirm it. Something that has happened to students in the past is that they don't communicate about that well. The roommate pair leader will pay that $75, the roommate will not. And then they're like, wait, my roommate's gone. Yeah, And it's like, <laughs> yeah they didn't they didn't pay their room booking fee in time and so really important that that communication is really open and prompt so that happens um very quickly so again it's 48 hours after you've put that bed inside of your cart um, in order to pay that room booking fee it is 75 dollars once you've paid it you're in that's it yeah your process is done yeah you can, you can wait for moving which is the truly exciting part. Yeah, that's the best. We love moving. Love it. It's, it's the most exciting time on it campus. It really is. And so after you've paid that room booking fee, like Chris was saying, you're basically done with the housing selection process. Um, you're only waiting until move-in. And then when we get closer to move-in, we will have more information about the move-in process and how that works. And you'll get another time ticket for that <laughs> as well. Um, it's not over yet. Oh. And so lots of other information will be coming for you. If you've made it this far um, and you're like, actually, I'm watching this a little bit later um, and I've, act I've tried to do all those things, but there aren't any rooms available anymore, that means that we've hit a wait list. Yes, so the past several years here at Kennesaw State, uh, we have had a wait list for first year students where what that means is we simply have run out of rooms and we don't have any more rooms for students to pick in the housing portal. And so what we do is we turn on our wait list process. And it's, it's, all that means is uh, it's free to add yourself to the wait list. Um, there are some families that think that we hold rooms back and we hide rooms from students during this process, but that's not true. We put all the rooms we have available online at the start of room selection. Mm -hmm. And once they're filled up, we turn, we turn that process off and we turn our wait list on. So we have uh, four different wait lists for first year students. It's broken out by campus, Kennesaw, Marietta, and by gender, male and female. Mm -hmm. And so when okay. that, if and when that time arrives, um, when, you, when your time ticket opens, if you see that, oh, oh, I see the wait list search page ahead, yes. that means that we're out of rooms. Now, being on the wait list is not the end of the world. Every summer, we're able to place hundreds of students off the wait list and into housing before school even starts in August. And we also continue to do wait list placements well after school starts. Generally speaking, mid to late September, things are starting to wind down with the wait list and, and our beds are full again. Um, so again, being on the wait list, 
It's not the end of the world. Uh, we place hundreds of students off of it. You'll be able to see your specific waitlist number live in the housing portal. Mm -hmm. And as we're placing people ahead of you, you'll see your number start to shrink and shrink and shrink. One of the most common questions we get, especially at summer orientations, is how long should I wait? It, it's May, it's June, it's July. I'm X number on the wait list. It's a really hard question for us to answer because yeah. uh, it depends on your student, your family situation, how far you live from campus. Mm -hmm. um, but the wait list has been a, an unfortunate part of our business the last couple years. We anticipate it's going to happen again, um, but when it happens, you'll be able to see the wait list in the portal. That's right. Um, another important thing to know about the wait list is that you are on a wait list for any room that opens up. And so once a, a room or a bed becomes available on campus, we will offer it to you as long as you fit the qualifications of that room. Mm -hmm. You know, it's on your campus, it's of your gender, um, and it could be in the summit, it could be in in the, the suites, it could be anywhere. And so we will offer it to you. If you don't want that room, you don't really get to say, well, I'd just like to get back on the wait list. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really work that way. And so if we offer it to you and you decline, then you will need to add yourself to the wait list again. And you will unfortunately go to the bottom of the wait list yes. at that point. Yeah. Um, another thing to point out, and it doesn't happen often, but there are some students who apply um, and complete their application initiation fee um, and either wait too long because they were thinking about going to other schools mm -hmm. or just were kind of indecisive if they were coming to KSU or not and wait too long to continue with the steps of the housing application um, until we're at a wait list, but they've already paid that $200 application initiation fee and they ask if they can get that money back. Yeah, unfortunately that application initiation fee is non-refundable. Uh, that's marked several places in the housing portal as students are paying it. So if you choose not to wait any longer and you wanna go off campus or you transfer to a different school, that money unfortunately is not refundable. Yes. So we don't do any deposits. We hear right. some families say that, well, I paid a deposit. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a non-refundable application initiation fee. And so just keep, keep that in mind as you're going through this process. One thing that we do want to mention before we head over to the frequently asked questions portion is what we call our no bullying policy. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've been doing this a while. Several three or four years at yes. this point. And we have seen this happen um, where students are really passionate about living with their friends. And um, this happens a lot when there's groups of four or mm -hmm. three or four of mm -hmm. students that want to live together. Obviously roommate pairs are pairs, so there's only two people there's in two them. Two people. And so what they say is, well, we're we will grab, uh, you know, two beds in this unit and we're going to save the other two beds in this unit. Um, but if your, your friends aren't on the portal at the same time to try to pick those beds together and another student places themselves in that bed, um, what we've had happen is students basically bullying the other one to get out of that room. Um, that is not acceptable. We, that is a no-no, a big no-no for us. And so our rooms selection process, just like everything else is first come first serve, and it's based on time tickets. So if another room has, another student has placed themselves in that room and they have paid their room booking fee, that room is theirs. Mm -hmm. You cannot bully them to leave so that your friends can have a space in there. And so please be courteous and kind to one another. Um, I know in the past we've had situations where we've had to have, you know, tell students like, if you continue to do this, we will drop your room booking. And, and we have dropped room bookings from students who were bullying. Now we don't do that without proof. Um, the students who were being bullied, we asked for documentation. Yes. We felt it was warranted. We then dropped the, the bully's room uh, it's a really unfortunate part of, of on-campus housing. Yeah, and keep in mind, like, when you're coming in, these are going to be your neighbors. Like, right. <laughs> you're going to be seeing you're them. You're going to be in class with you're them. You're going to be in class. Like, you're going to be seeing these people in the dining halls or wherever, and so be kind to one yes, another. Yes, please. And, and if you do want to live, you know, with, with a group of four, then it takes a lot of coordination. Mm -hmm. And so just make sure that you're trying to coordinate those things um, together and, and not bullying anybody else. Please. Campus. Yes. And so... That was a lot of information that we just went through. Yeah. So what we'll do is go ahead and answer some of your frequently asked questions now. One of the first questions that we got is, can I choose a room on either campus? Unfortunately not. Uh, so as we stated at the start of the room selection overview, um, we show you the rooms for your specific campus. A, a follow-up question might be, how do I know what campus I'm on? 
So we, we classify students based on their major. So majors that are housed in Marietta, you're gonna be a Marietta-based student. Same thing for Kennesaw. If you're a Kennesaw-based student or you're undeclared, you're gonna live on the Kennesaw campus. And so that's how we split students up and you won't be able to see rooms on both campuses. Another question that we get is, is there a priority or priority housing for people who applied for housing really early, like the first day that the application opened? Uh, there's not really a priority for those students, but they do, they will get the earliest time tickets possible. So whatever date the room selection process opens, you're almost guaranteed to be on that, that very first day. So in a way that is getting priority if, yeah. if you applied on the first day. It's a day. first come first serve model. Right. What happens if I just don't select a bed? Oh, well, uh, that would either indicate that you're no longer coming to Kennesaw or you haven't read our emails or anything yeah. like that. Uh, we do not do any manual placements. From our very first live video, we said this process is completely student driven. The power's in your hands. So if you wanna live on campus, you've gotta take action. And if you don't pick a bed, you're gonna end up on our wait list if we end up reaching a wait list. And you'll have to wait until we reach your name on the wait list. That's right. What should I do if I'm on a wait list, but I'm also of a, of a living learning village during room selection? This question is pretty common. So our LLV living learning village partners, they have a certain number of beds that they can fill. And in turn, they accept a certain number of students into their living learning village. If you're waitlisted for a living learning village, my best recommendation would be to go ahead and pick a room on campus because you may not ever come off that LLV waitlist. I would not rely on that. So this is insider info. If you're on an LLV waitlist, that means they've already picked the exact number of students for their exact number of beds and your chances of being pulled into that LLV are slim. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna guarantee yourself housing on campus, go ahead and pick a bed. And then if you're admitted into the LLV after the fact, then there's a bed for you there and we can change that on our end. If you're in a living learning village, do you have priority at room selection over other students? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's a priority, but again, if, if you've been accepted into an LLV, you are guaranteed that there is a bed available for you. So there's, there's no chance that you're not gonna end up with a bed within that LLV because we take great strides to make sure we don't over accept for our living learning villages. Mm -hmm. So again, no priority necessarily, but there's a certain bed set aside for you. A really popular question that we get year after year is, I wanna live with four of my friends or three of my friends or whatever, a bigger group of people. More than but two. Usually, more than two. How do we make that happen? Okay, this is, like Catherine said, this is an every year question. Yes. It is, it comes down to communicating with both roommate pairs. Yes. Uh, so my, my best example for this is, let's say you have a roommate pair of two, their earliest time ticket opens Tuesday at noon. The other roommate pair, their time ticket opens Wednesday at one. In order for y'all to have the best chance of living together, you need to wait until both pairs time tickets are open. Mm -hmm. So that would be Wednesday at one o'clock and then go in together as two roommate pairs and search for two different sets of rooms in the same unit. Not saying it's impossible, I'm just right. saying it's more difficult. Yeah. Um, we changed our roommate groups. We used to allow groups of four down to roommate pairs, pairs of two, uh, because we don't have a lot of units that can accommodate groups of four. Of four. Yeah. So we decided to undo that and change it a couple years ago. It's not impossible. We see student groups do it every year. It's just going to come down to coordination and honestly, pure luck. Yeah. Uh, I think also you have to ask yourself, what is the most important thing to me, especially if you're in that roommate pair that has the earlier time ticket, um, because there could be, you have to remember that there are people coming in every 15 minutes right. after your time ticket opens until that next group opens. And so if you don't have, you know, the look, right, that your your time tickets are only a day apart or even hours apart, then, and you're, they're actually days, more than two days even, I would say, what's more important to you? 
actually confirming a bed on campus or living with your friends. You can mm. always tell them what unit you picked. Right. And say, hey, we're living in unit so-and-so in University Village on this floor. Try to find something near us. Yeah. Visit each other. Go down the hall. Yeah, I, I also like to give the example of, okay, so you're, you're a friend group of four. You're in two pairs of two and you end up in different units. That's actually a good thing. You make new friends. You're gonna make, you're gonna double your friends. You're gonna go from having four friends to eight friends. That's right. And it's gonna be great. You know, living with strangers, strangers is a strong word. <laughs> living with new people new is a people. great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> new adventures. So be open to new new adventures. I That's love it. right. <laughs> All right. And so if you have other questions, there is a probability, a very high probability that we have already answered it on our website. So make sure that you visit our website and look at all of the frequently asked questions that we have on there. We've mentioned this a few times, but we also have step-by-step -step guides for all of these, all of the steps of the housing application. So make sure that you look there as well. Also, your email is going to be so important. So if you've already gotten into the pattern of checking your email, great. If you haven't, start doing it now. Do it today. It's very important. Add it to your phone. That's it, right. It's it, so easy. It's compatible with all the different phones so that are out easy. there. So easy. And also, as we're gearing up to the more exciting part, which is move in, we send a lot of communication about move in. A lot. Yeah. And like Catherine said, you'll have a time ticket uh, where you will pick your exact move in day and time. So please check your email. That's right. And so. Look out for information about move-in. Sign up for orientation if you haven't already. Um, do all of the things that you need to do to get yourself ready to start at KSU because we are so excited to welcome you. If you have any questions after today, please reach out to the Talent One Service Center. They are really your one-stop shop for any questions that you may have, not only about housing, but any of our other campus services departments like the bookstore or dining or parking. And so all the things that you need to, to really know about KSU, Make sure that you reach out to them. Follow us on social if you haven't already at Housing KSU. And we'll see you during our next one that's all about moving. Can't wait. That's See right. you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.